what's up Swift here and today we will be at one of our final parts before we have our full full fledged uh, DIY NAS all set up and running. Today we will be learning how to um, finally transfer files from outside our local area network. That means it's going your NAS will be working something like your Dropbox account, your Microsoft SkyDrive and uh, Google Drive. Uh, so you can just transfer a file to and from your server from outside as long as you have a, an internet connection. So what we're going to do today is to set up something that is called SFTP. That is basically FTP through via uh, SSH. Um, it's a file transfer protocol through SSH. Now there are various other methods to transfer files. Um, mainly something that you might have heard of is FTP itself, File Transfer Protocol. That's one of the more standard ones that uh, most people use in web servers and so on. Um, there is also FTPS and there is also an alternative. There is um, Samba, which we have already set up to transfer files from our Windows PC to share files from our server itself. Now, why I have chosen SFTP, uh, you can read this more in depth uh, simply by Googling. But let me just tell you briefly why um, FTP and Samba itself are unencrypted connections, which means that data transmission can be intercepted and uh, people who want to gain access to your system can easily do so by just tapping a connection and seeing um, what um, the password and so on because everything is unencrypted. Now that leaves us with FTPS and uh, SFTP. Uh, do not mix both up. Uh, FTPS is FTP true with SSL uh, encryption and uh, SFTP is um, SSH. Uh, FTP, which is shell, um, is a, uses um, the shell SSH um, system to transfer uh, data. Now both are encrypted, but um, the reason why I am using SFTP itself is because uh, SFTP, we do not need to open any other ports because um, the port that it uses is the same as your shell server, your SSH server. And um, the next thing is that at FTPS um, requires you to open a range of ports which can become um, quite um, troublesome and it also uh, becomes more of a security threat because more ports are open. So uh, SFTP is the winner for me here and that is what I'm going to teach you today. So basically SFTP is really set up as long as you have your SSH server up. Um, but you do need to um, modify the configuration file to make it act as a um, as if it's like a jailed access, which I'll explain more about later on. So now what we're gonna do first is to create a group um, that it create a group within uh, Linux itself uh, or our server itself to identify users that will have only um, such an access. So um, what we're gonna do now is to simply do a sudo group add um, and then your group name. So um, I'm going to name mine SFTP account. Now um, I've already added this group, so uh, it's not gonna show yours, which just say that the group has been added. So yeah, once we have that, we are going to have to add a new user or modify a user to um, add them into this group. So if you're adding a new user, what you want to do is to do something like that. Sudo user add. Now this dash D here specifies the, the user's home, um, is the user's home directory. The dash M here specifies that um, this directory should be created um, should it not exist. Now I really suggest you to create a common folder, something like a slash SFTP for all your SFTP accounts, uh, all the users that you want to incorporate into this um, SFTP only access. Um, you can put them into here and simply change the um, ending part to fit the user's um, account name. So dash M, create the the directory if it does not exist and then later we're going to do a dash g here um, specify the group that is going to be added into and let's sftp account and then the name of the user itself now this will add the user insight and uh if you want to see if it's added pop 
properly you can simply do something like that uh, grep grep and then slash etc slash password and the user account name sorry it should be the r it should be the other way around and we have that here so yep yeah, that's that just shows that we have the um, user created and in the right directory so the next thing you want to do is that um, uh, we should configure the ssh key now if you do not if you are not using an SSH key authentication system, um, you will have to uh, create a password for this user. Else, uh, I would strongly suggest you, if you haven't already done so, to switch to a key authentication system because it is much more secure and it's safer. So, what we're going to use here is a two called Putty. Uh, if you, I'm actually using it. They have this key generator here um, that will allow you to generate keys. Uh, key pairs that will help you to um, gain access so what we're going to do here you can modify this um, uh, into a higher um, encryption level uh, 4096 it will simply be a longer key and harder to be brute force uh, so for now I'm just going to have it at default settings and just generate one so uh, this is just for tutorial now um, certain um, certain applications on your system for example i'm using fauzilla uh, does not support a key password phrase um, other systems do i'm not very sure so you can you may want to leave this out for maximum compatibility but of course uh, security is somewhat compromised a little bit but uh it is not too much of a problem so i'm just going to save the the private key Now all the good stuff are here, but so I'm going to just save it, and then we're going to save the public key as well. Now once you have saved all that, what you want to do is to go into the folder itself. As you can see here. And then you're going to open this with your favorite um, word editing. And what you're going to do is basically copy this, the public key. You want to copy it, control C it. And um, now we, what we're going to do here is to add it into our authorized list. Now uh, it is located somewhere here. You simply go to the um, home directory of your user account. And then you're going to type in slash dot ssh slash authorize and score keys now what you're going to do here you can just simply paste it and um you're basically good to go so the problem here is that you will have to create the folder first and then you can do Yep, so my mistake there, you will have to create the folder first, um, the .ssh, and then you just save it. See here, um, just copy and paste it, simply like that. We'll do it. So, next thing you want to do is to... Um, what we'll do next is to actually uh, access what we call, uh, we have to modify the SSH um, server configurations and that is done by doing a sudo nano slash etc slash SSH slash SSHD underscore configuration. Now what you're going to do here is to scroll and find the following line here. Now this will be will be uncommented um, by default and uh, what you want to do here is add in a hex here to um, comment that thing out and type the following in subsystem space sftp space internal dash sftp now next thing you want to do is scroll all the way down and type in the following match 
group sftp account or whichever group name that you have created and the following now what this does is basically uh, all users that are within this group that is that you have specified will undergo such rules such rules will be enforced onto them which is uh, force command internet sftp which means that they will only has sorry they will only have uh, sftp access and not shell access so they will not be able to run commands and so on and so forth but they can simply do is read and um, read and write data and here tree root directory you have to put it to the directory of your choice here um, this is my main directory where i have all my data stored so it's slash media uh, one thing to take note is that these this directory has to be owned um, by root both the owner and the group has to be root uh, else it will not work so if you're going to use it on your user's home directory uh, you will have to create another directory within the user's home directory um, for it for your users to um, write files into it so just take note about that and then once you have that you simply exit and do something like sudo service ssh restart now uh, this will refresh all the settings and load the new settings up and uh, you are actually good to go so to test it out um, what you want to do is to use a whichever your favorite program is mine is Fauzilla here and uh, we're gonna just gonna create a new a new one so the user that we are is tutorial and uh, I believe it's here yeah yeah, 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 yeah. so basically um, you will have to add in your key file here so that it will verify that it's under tutorial um, so that you will lock in properly so our uh, different programs will have different ways of doing things so you just have to take note hmm. yeah okay now it should work because the when I cut and paste earlier in Notepad 2, uh, the formatting was screwed up. And there we go. We are in the system and this is so small. And we are in. So that is that is all. Um, you have SFTP all set up and ready. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoy this video and by the time you watch finish you finish watching this video and completed everything um, you should have your DIY NAS fully set up your home server fully set up and ready to go um, in future I'll put up uh, more videos um, that are not really necessary but it's gonna be fun for fun and extension of uh, what your server can actually do so that is it um, do make sure to do remember to uh, port forward so that you can access it from outside your local area network um, if you like this video do give it a thumbs up and uh, for more such videos do subscribe to me on my channel or follow me at twitter at swiftpolar or visit me at my website at www.swiftworld.net